No, I thought this was interesting. Um, just because it happened, I'm making a video about it just to address it because it does feel good to be like, Olivia's always right because <laughs> Olivia's always right. Um, so, um, our very cute pop star girly from South Africa, Tyla, went on The Breakfast Club. Now I don't watch The Breakfast Club, I don't tune in, <clears throat> but um, I don't know even why this came on my radar. No one shared this with me and I don't follow The Breakfast Club and I stopped following Tyla, but um, her album did came up, come out and I actually did listen to it. I have some thoughts and I'll share those after, but I just want to read her statement. Um, so basically what happened on The Breakfast Club, they get like 15 minutes or so into the interview and then Charlemagne asks, he's like, oh, let's talk about like, there's been some controversy around this term colored. <clears throat> um, and then she like looks back at her publicist or someone else on her team. And then they're like, actually, let's just skip this question. We don't want to answer this question. And I guess that clip goes viral. <laughs> so she puts out something on her story and it says, yeah, guys, never denied my blackness. I don't know where that came from. I'm mixed with black, Zulu, Irish, um, Mauritian, Indian, and colored. <clears throat> Some of those are not races, but that's totally fine. In South Africa, I would be classified as a colored woman and other places I would be classified as a black woman. Race is classified differently in different parts of the world. Um, I would say like yes and no, like cu cultural groups, yes, but like there's only four, there's only four racial groups. There's other cultural groups, but <clears throat> that's a whole other thing. Especially when like uh, most of the things around like race politics come from like Europe, Britain and America. So <laughs> like they literally define those terms. So you can't use a term that was defined somewhere and then start to redefine the same term. Now we're not talking about the same thing. So if you're talking about culturally, that's fine. You can just say like, I have a culture of being whatever. <clears throat> and then she says, I don't expect to be identified as colored outside of South Africa by anyone not comfortable doing so because I understand the weight of that word outside of South Africa, but to close this conversation, I'm both colored in South Africa and a black woman. She totally spelled woman wrong, that's okay. As a woman for the culture and not, or with that being said, a sambe. Now, I kind of think this is just hilarious because I started, the reason I had this conversation was because um, I saw so many people kind of st kind of coming from the wrong place where they weren't acknowledging like what's happening in South Africa is not necessarily like what's happening here. Like you can't expect us all to be like, yeah, like we agree with you. We see shit the same way you see it. Like we don't, especially like, um, Colored is an, an actual derogatory term in America. Like it's a it's historically been used to be, be like pro racist, um, man. And yeah, so another thing that is really interesting um, is the people who were making all of the arguments in my videos and the comments and shit. They were like basically saying like she isn't black she herself has called herself black everyone in america is calling her black and not in some way where it's like derogatory like she's like a, a beautiful like black girl and it's not there's there's nothing like wrong with it it's not derogatory it's like there are tons of other black women here in america who like look like her who identify with her who like her not tons, I mean, she's not that many fans, but like, it's great. Like even like other like white women, like all type of people from other cultures look at her and be like, oh yes, this is, she's awesome. Like she's, <clears throat> you know, whatever. I think, I think that some of the like newer conversations that are stemming up, the like 
uh, exotical stuff, like, I don't know, maybe it's good, it's positive for people to self-segregate into these like identity groups that help them understand, you know, who they are similar to and who they are not similar to in ways I don't really know. I don't really care, but that's why I stopped. I, like, I was just so shocked that people kept watching that those videos. Like, I was shocked that those videos kept going, like, people kept sharing them and watching them. I thought it was weird. Um, I also thought it was, I thought it was weird for Tyler to go on The Breakfast Club. To me, honestly, it's kind of shocking to have, like, for her to go into all the black spaces and then for other people to be like, she's not black. It was just super, The Breakfast Club is like a seriously black space. It's like an incredibly black American space. Like, there's no way her team thought that they weren't going to bring that up in conversation. <laughs> like, it's, so, it's so strange. Like that's weird and um i don't know i the, the, the other thing too that i will continue to say like if i'm not trying to be like offensive to anyone in any part of africa right like but i will say like it isn't like black americans or other black people like habisha people are coming to south africa and then trying to like tell you how to identify a whole like if there was some term or something that was really specific to like a historic thing that happened you know in South Africa and then I was to come over as a Habisha person and be like yes so like this term that I have now classified in my culture now that I'm in your space in your country <laughs> fuck your meaning of the term I'm taking the term for myself and uh, every single thing that you know about it or whatever does it fuck all that it doesn't matter anymore I'm gonna tell you how it is which is kind of what these people were doing it's like you're completely gaslighting um, real conversations around race that are pretty serious like for like for for instance I think the biggest way that this plays out is like in terms of like American Jim Crow laws, <laughs> like colored Tyla would not be able to perform her music anywhere that she's performing it now. The Late Show, the Late Night Show, the Jimmy Fallon Show, she couldn't have done that. The Vivo Tour, she couldn't have done that. A colored, no, there's actually colors. Colors is like a, a show. She couldn't have done that. There's all of these things that like would not have been available to her in America because she was colored. It's like a racist term. So I think that is what most of the black Americans were saying. Just because like that historical context is really important. And it, it was just very clear like, South Africans were trying to take so much hold of like the music and the culture and this like icon that is coming from their space, which is fine. And what I was saying is like, but she's here. Like every single thing she's doing is in America now. Like she's having a North American tour. <laughs> she keeps coming on like all the American media channels and marketing to like black americans like they're making commercials that are being pushed out into our communities and that's like super weird for you to be like yeah i'm not a part of this community at all but <laughs> it just sounds it sounds kind of it sounds racist first of all and then it just sounds stupid because like if you're really like anti a group, stop going near the group. Be more Nick Fuentes about it and be like, fuck them. Like, you know, like they're over there and they're not a part of me. But to put out a statement that is legitimately the exact same thing that I said, it was every argument that I was saying and I can't even describe it. It felt like the whole, everyone from South Africa was getting online <laughs> to be like, you're wrong. <laughs> she know and then it was it was like too many like slighty things like all this shit where she was like posting her um dna results or something it was like that's weird 
duties. Like, uh, doing that at a time when you're, tr you're trying to prove to people or something that you're not black, especially when we've had this conversation so many times in America, like, you just gotta know the context of when you're coming somewhere, like what it means. Like black Americans are also not 100% African. Like they have quite a lot of European blood because of slavery. Ugh. Anyway, not the point. Um, let's go back for a second. So I actually like the Tyla album. I listened to it. I listened to it last week. Um, and here is, I'm gonna actually, I've been listening to Sabrina Carpenter a lot more, I've gotta say. But I saw that she did um, a song with Becky G called On My Body. That is my favorite song so far on the album. But I gotta say from, I haven't listened to Jump that much, but I've heard people talk about it. Maybe it's because the video came out, but I do think that the last like, is it five tracks? Art on my body, priorities to last, and the water remix. I like all of those songs, but I think I like that Becky G song a lot. I think she should put out um, like some visuals with Becky G for that. That song is like a slap. It's kind of like um, what is it? Bad Bunny and Drake put out a song called Gently on <laughs> Drake's last album. Those two, like this, these combinations of kind of like afro beats and like latin salsa jams they're creating this fusion that's like bomb <laughs> like gently is like a whole bop and this song with uh, becky g is as well so um just kind of wanted to make this video to clarify that because it it came out and i think it's useful to we covered pop culture stuff here so yeah